Hey guys, Matthew in today's video I'm going to bring you guys an update on my league starter, uh, how the build felt, how the currency is going, uh, you know, how you should go about making currency and all that good stuff. Um, and of course my self-imposed challenge. So I'm going to start off with the build. Uh, now, was the build bait? Like a lot of people, there was a lot of controversy around this build. Was it actually going to be bait? Was it actually going to be good? In my opinion, it was great. It was definitely one of the strongest league starters I've ever made, especially in the context of how difficult the game is in the current state. Um, I would say that arguably right now is like it's almost harder than it was in Arch Nemesis uh, at the start of last league with Arch Nemesis being extremely buffed because there are so many rares. They said that there's going to be less rares. That's bullshit. There's a ton of rares. Not only is there a ton of rares, they have like 17 million buffs, uh, Arch Nemesis buffs, which all like multiply each other. And yeah, okay, sure, you'll be able to get like 700 armor scraps, which is great. Uh, because then you don't have to pick up armor scraps, but but they're way too difficult. Uh, there's definitely been an extra zero somewhere. I'm waiting to see if GGG is going to say anything about it. Everyone's complaining about rares being too hard, and everyone's complaining about basically loot being too low, uh, which I think are two very valid questions. One of the best way to make money right now is unironically to speedrun white maps, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Anyways, so was the build a bait? Absolutely not. Now, the thing is, you might be playing this build right now, and you might be struggling. And you might be like, no, that's not true. The, the build was a bait. I regret League starting this. So what I'll do here is I'll give you guys a bit of a check mark, or sorry, a bit, a bit of a, a benchmark of where you want to be in terms of investment for the build to feel good, because there are some places where you'll get into that will start to feel pretty bad. So the first thing is upon reaching maps, right? Once you reach maps, you're going to start having a bit of a bad time. And the way that you're going to fix that is that you're essentially going to res cap. So you're going to buy gear with resin life. And you want to have around, at that point, you want to aim for around 3.5k life with just the life that you have on your gear. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to reserve a portion of that with vitality, probably around 300, 400 or so. Um, so you're not quite going to have that 3.5k available, but you'll be res capped. And this is fine for white maps. You'll have more than enough damage on a four link with the act two scepter craft it's it's just enough like it's perfectly fine now once you reach uh once you reach t5 t6 maps you're going to start running into damage issues you're going to start running into basically the build is going to start feeling a little bit bad so how do you actually go about fixing it once you get to t5 t6 maps is you're going to buy a tabula tabula plus gear upgrade and you want to buy you want to start aiming at like uh basically 4k life at that point uh so you'll buy tabula which is going to give you a six link you'll start upgrading your gear a little bit to where you have more life so you want to aim for about 4k life which is probably going to be about 3.6k uh with uh, the amount un unreserved that you get and then also what you want to buy is a plus one cold either scepter or wand right now at that point you're still not crit based so you're still going to be eo even in the even in in your yellow mapping and this is going to make it so you're going to absolutely breeze through t5 t6 t7s t8s t9s t10s around t10 t11 you're going to start feeling bad again right once you reach around t10s t11 maps it's going to start once again being a little bit of a struggle you might have issues with killing rares map bosses might take a little bit long um, now at that point it's time to start looking for uh your uber lab so at that point, you'll be around level probably 75 or so, 75 to 78, depending on how many maps you've done. Um, and then you'll start looking for Uber Lab. And then you'll also basically swap into crits, right? Because at that point, you're just getting carried by EO, Elemental Overload. Now it's time to swap into crits. And then you're also going to fix all your sockets and gems to match the POB. Because once we swap into crit, we'll start going into, you know, the Divine Blessing, uh set up we'll start going into we're going to drop frost bomb and we're going to start looking into instead uh getting uh you know assassin's mark as our curse we're, we're going to start getting um uh what else um mm, actually that's pretty much it uh so yeah we're going to fix our sockets we're going to fix our gems and we're going to get uber lab and then again our damage is going to feel really 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 good from t10s t11s t12s t13s Around T14, T15, you're once again going to run into a bit of an issue with damage and survivability. 
right? So around T14 plus maps. Now this is what a lot of people like to call pretty much early end game, if you will. So end game before you start juicing later on. So once you reach around T14 maps, now at that point you're already into crit. You've already got your Uber Lab, your sockets are fixed, and your gems are also matching the POV. Uh, what you need to start doing now is to look for actual DPS and survivability upgrades. So once you reach D4 life, so what you'll do is basically you'll look for uh, life and res gear, right? Lev attributes, right? And then your goal is to get to around 4.5k life, which is probably going to be around 4.2k unreserved, which is kind of what I have right here, right? Uh, 4 4.2k unreserved um, from your vitality. And this is going to be plenty to carry you. Um, another thing you're going to start looking for is either like a high crit multi or a plus one cold amulet. You can even get it plus two if you're able to snipe one from Lake of Calandra. Uh, there's definitely some good plus two popping up. Uh, but yeah, a high crit multi or a plus one cold amulet. You'll also want to anoint your amulet. And then another big thing is you will absolutely want your cluster jewel, right? Now the cluster jewel is expensive if you buy it, but it's actually pretty easy to craft. So the way that you're going to do this in order to craft this is that you are going to alteration spam for arcane pyrotechnics. I believe it's like 20 alterations and 10 augments. So let's just say 30 alterations to get it on average. Then you're going to augment to get a suffix and then you're going to regal and, and it's a one in 15, I believe, to get guerrilla tactics. So if you do the math on that, it's like 20 or 30 alterations and then you'll, you'll have to do it on average like 15 times and you're going to be done. I did the math on it. It's like 40, 50 C or something to craft this yourself. Now, 40 50 c for a cluster might sound like a lot, but Arcane Power Techniques gives you Arcane Surge, which is 10% more damage, plus around 3% damage from the Trap and Mine damage thingy. And then the Gorilla Tactics is like 7% damage, right? So this, this little jewel here is literally 20% more damage to your build. It's insane how much damage you get out of this. And it's also a really nice quality of life. It gives you move speed and it gives you throw speed. Also, you're going to get a jewel socket so that you can put in a life and multi-jewel that looks something... Uh, like this, for example, right? Just life and crit multi. Um, and these rules are just a few chaos each, uh, like two, three chaos for life and multi if you have no res on them. Right, so this is how you're going to fix your build around T14 plus maps in order to start feeling really good. Now, at that point, you should be having no issues with the regular monsters and the boss of the maps, but you still might have issues with league mechanics, right? In T14 plus maps, things like expeditions, things like essences, things like uh, rituals breaches that's not really because of the build that's just due to the fact that the actual league mechanic rares are absolutely insane it seems like the arc nemesis modifiers are like multiplicative with each other it's a like it's annoying and it's really really hard and yeah i i'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what build you're playing you're gonna have a hard time so at that time at that point where you're gonna start looking for is your actual um upgrade on your body armor now, initially, I had put this in the body armor, a full dragon scale, uh, because I was expecting to be able to use Harvest to, to properly uh, color the sockets uh, to get, you know, spell suppression on an armor evasion base and still be able to get three blues and three greens very easily with Harvest. Unfortunately, they removed that, which makes it much, much harder. So what you'll start, what you'll want to look for, your first big upgrade, right? Your first big upgrade, I'm talking like multiple divines, is actually going to be a skin of the lords. Now... The skin of the lords is going to be very, very good because if you have determination uh, plus granite flask plus armor during flask effect and molten shell on castle damage taken at level eight, uh, a level fourteen molten shell with level eight castle damage taken. Uh, you are going to get around 30,000 armor during your map. Uh, and that is more than enough to carry your survivability. And the Skin of Lords is also going to offer a lot of damage, right? Now, the second big upgrade is going to be getting a level 21 Eye of Winter. It's not that expensive, and it is very good for your DPS. Now, another thing at that point also is you'll really want to make sure that you are suppression capped. It's going to be a little bit harder because we won't get suppression on the body armor like we were initially going to be able to do because we go for the skin instead. So you'll either have to go with like uh, a Ziri step in order to easily cap your suppression, or you could either get suppression on say your helmet and your gloves 
And if you do that both, you'll easily be able to make up for the suppression as long as you have a decent amount of suppression on your shield. And people are selling like high life suppression shields for very, very cheap, 10, 20, 30 C, whatever, which might sound like a lot if you're in the early progression, but once you get to T14 plus maps, that's nothing. Uh, you'll easily be able to make that currency very quickly. So these are essentially the upgrades in order to make the, the build feel really, really good. And then I would highly recommend you try to stick to the POB as close as possible and you're going to have a very good time. Your damage is going to feel good, your survivability is going to feel good, and you're going to have no issues. Like from level 90 to 92, I basically didn't die at all. Uh, uh, once I got you know my skin of lords, I fixed up my life pool uh, and uh, it just started being an absolute breeze. Uh, and I could have easily got into probably 94, 95 before it started being annoying to actually level in maps. Um, because yeah, it was just it was just destroying maps completely. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we're at in terms of the uh, benchmarks, if you will, that you need to reach in order to make the build feel good. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than I had initially thought. I didn't really think that you need such upgrades that often to make the build feel good, but that's just the way it is with the current Arc Nemesis monsters. Uh, they're just really hard, right? That's really all it comes down to. Uh, not the regular ones in maps, but the, the ones which are paired with league mechanics. Okay, now let's talk about currency, right? Let's talk about our self-imposed challenge. So the self-imposed challenge was the essential, essentially I was going to be able to do only league mechanics which were available in the casual exile document. So I did not do any sort of league mechanic or any sort of currency related strategies through the entirety of my progression once i hit my uh, once i did my searing in my year of world i started looking at ways to make money so i went to the casual exile document and i started looking and i realized that hey essences are really good right five chaos profit per map and that's per like per map from just the map mods which is i believe something um something like 1.2 essences on average or something 1.4 so you can get another two essences for like two or three chaos from the map device so I was like, wait, that's going to be really good. The problem is, in, the problem is after I did my, eat, my eater and my searing and I upgraded my build and I tried an essence in a T14 map, it was still feeling absolutely awful. Uh, so I decided not to do that. So then I knew at that point that league mechanics were going to be very hard on single target DPS. So I knew that there was a lot of things that I couldn't really do. I couldn't do essences. I couldn't do metamorph. I couldn't really do Blight unless I built a ton, a ton of towers and I was too lazy to do that. Obviously, a Miner is not a great build for farming Legion, so I couldn't really do Legions either. Uh, Beasts, obviously, again, couldn't really do that. Too much single target required. Uh, Betrayal is what I was initially going to do, mostly for farming Katarina, however. Uh, but I decided I was too lazy to do that. Uh, Bridgestone farming are pretty good, but the problem with that is that you need Sextants. And at that point, I didn't have my Void Stones. Uh, and I obviously didn't want to roll sextants for something like that this early. So I landed on Expedition. Expedition looked like it was going to be pretty juicy at 16 Chaos Profit per map. Um, you know, with the price of Divines being at that point like 70 C or so, I was like, okay, I'll do like five maps. I'll make a Divine, uh, which is equal to an Exalt in previous leagues. And that's like pretty good for just going in, clearing the Expedition, getting out. Um, and that's what I decided to do because the monsters were not particularly hard. To actually kill like yes there were some tanky rares especially paired with like really tanky altars but for the most part it was pretty good and that's where i made most of my currency was in t14 plus uh expedition and i wasn't using the scarab or anything i was just using stream of consciousness with the actual nodes for um uh sorry for uh expedition i was getting an expedition probably like eight maps out of ten so it was really quite good um so once I did that, I basically made enough money. And that's essentially how I made my money to buy my skin of the Lords. Uh, and, you know, to start actually making a little bit of extra currency as well to buy some little bit, a little bit of upgrades there, here and there. And then I worked up to another like five divines so that I can make the swap into the actual boss, ver uh, boss gun version of the build, which I do not recommend. It's a very hyper focused specific uh, build where you basically have zero defenses. Yes, you are res capped, but that's about all you get but it will one-shot Maven in seconds with like very minimal investment, if you will. Um, so anyways, that's what I did. Uh, and then I started bossing, which is where most of the currency comes from. And this was only from a few, a couple hours or a few hours of bossing. And I'm not, wasn't being efficient buying the maps in bulk or anything, just buying the maps one at a time, trying to get the cheapest ones possible and not doing any sort of servicing for anybody. 
So very casual bossing. And I saw that Shaper was about, you know, 20, 30 C profit because this doesn't include the bases, which you can get, which are definitely worth a little bit this early into the league. Uh, so 20, 30 C profit every time takes a few minutes, not the end of the world. Uh, so what I, and then I saw that formed invitations were also quite profitable as well. As you can see, Uber formed, which is basically if you're capable of, of doing stream of consciousness and height of hubris, right, uh, are about 130 C profit. So it's like one divine every time you did a formed in terms of profit. So that was really good. So what I did is I bought four Shaper Guardian maps or Elder Guardian maps. I did the formed or the twisted. Then I basically did the Shaper or the Elder. And then I basically got a, a full Maven from the actual invitation itself. So I would do the Maven and then I would buy four more maps and go again. And I basically just did that over and over again, which is where I made most of my currency after I had swapped into the bossing setup. Uh, now the mapping setup can do all of that. You'll definitely have a harder time doing the Uber version though, but uh, I did do a formed on the non-bossing setup and it, it was perfectly fine. Um, a little bit longer to kill, but that's to be expected given the fact that my gear was, uh, my, my DPS was about a little over half what I have in this POV. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty, pretty bad uh, in terms of gear. Okay, now let's talk about what I actually recommend to make currency because I don't really think that that's the way to go. Now, given the, the difficulty of the actual um, uh, the actual mechanics and given the fact that you will need to invest a significant amount into your character in order to be able to interact with these different mechanics at these different levels what I actually recommend and this might sound crazy but it's to stick to white maps now why would I ever recommend to stick to white maps the reality is there are different like there are different mechanics in this game which do not scale with the actual map tier that you're in and these mechanics tend to be the ones that are very very quick to do so you can easily just go in do the mechanic and get out and because it's a t1 map you don't even have to worry about reaching the boss you don't have to worry about any of that you literally just go and do the mechanic and leave so which ones are those mechanics looking at the casual excel document so the first one is going to be essences Right now, essences are extremely hard to deal with in red maps. They get crazy tanky, especially when you throw in altars and all the eldritch monsters. But an essence in a T1 map is not very hard at all, right? Especially if you're, you know, around level 80, 85, or something like that. You've done all your progression, you get to red maps, you go all the way back to T1s, T2s, T3s, and essences are going to be an absolute breeze. So you'll do essence on the map device, and I'll type this down. So currency strap, right now. Essence, map device, plus obviously the nodes on the tree. Uh, now my estimation of that is that it's going to be roughly at 5 chaos per the essence nodes, plus the two more essence for 2 chaos or whatever. It's probably going to be around 14c profit per map. That's pretty decent considering you're just putting in a T1 map, going in, killing the essence, and getting out. Okay. Now the next thing is strong boxes. Strong boxes are only 2c per map. But the thing is, you could easily just throw in a rusted scarab with the strong box nodes on your atlas, right? The strong box nodes down here, you get a free strong box, you get corrupted, and you get the nodes up here. And that is probably going to be roughly, for my estimation, uh, around um, probably around 6C profit per map. Uh, if you have uh, well, 5, 6C profit per map. If you have basically just the strong box nodes and, of course, the. Um, uh sorry like a, a rusted ambush scarab now another one is metamorph metamorph is really good the rust it, you can see that it's a 14c profit per metamorph now the thing about metamorph is that they're really really hard but again if you're progressing and you're able to do t14 maps once you go back to like t1s t2s t3s trust me that a metamorph is going to absolutely melt because you're going to have significantly higher damage than what is required and what is expected of you to have even with the buff so you can buy you can get, uh, and this is basically uh, with without uh, any like crazy amount of nodes on the atlas. So when it comes to metamorph, what you want to do is essentially grab uh, these nodes over here, which you're going to be already right next to because you're grabbing the essence stuff. So you're going to grab uh, this so you can make two metamorphs. Then you're going to grab this for the fill faster. And then uh, you actually are going to grab these three little nodes here, but you're not going to grab this because you're going to be forcing it with a scarab, right? And then the other nodes are here. But this is Rogue Metamorph, which we don't care about. And then the other nodes are here, 
which are really good, but they're really, really far and they make Metamorph significantly harder. So what you do is you literally just grab this and these three nodes and that's Metamorph for you. And that, as you can see, is a value of 14 C per map. The Scarab is like a Chaos or two or whatever. So Metamorph is gonna be roughly 12 C profit per map, right? And now Blight does scale with a uh, map level, so we're not gonna be doing that. Legions doesn't really scale with, uh, with um, map tiers, but most builds are gonna have a struggle when it comes to fully clearing them especially if you're playing my build, so that's not a good recommendation. Uh, Beast, if you're not doing some shenanigans for beast farming, it's not going to be worth it this early on. Uh, Betrayal, if you know what you're doing, is great, especially if you're able to farm Katarina. Uh, Breachstones, again, you'll need the sextants for that, so we're going to skip that. And then the last thing that you're going to do is going to be Expedition. Now, why Expedition? Because Expedition drops a lot of stuff, uh, and the logbooks, even the low tier ones, are actually worth a decent amount of currency, and the sextants are pretty, pretty cheap. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a rusted scarab. Now this is from trying. Uh, this is from T16 mapping. Uh, so what you're probably going to make is not going to be quite as much as that, but it's probably going to be about 10 C per map. And now all you need for expedition, essentially, uh, you don't need these because we're not even going to focus on artifacts whatsoever. We're basically just going to go for logbooks and real currencies. Uh, so you're not going to be needing any of the chance to spawn um, because we're going to be using a scarab. So all you'll need is essentially these nodes over here for the refresh currencies and for the more explosions and stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, because you're already going to be up here grabbing these nodes, you're also going to grab uh, this because of the extra lockbook. This is pretty much the mandatory node for this specific mechanic, right? Um, so looking at your atlas, you're basically going to be blocking a bunch of mechanics which you don't want. Uh, or sorry, you're not actually going to be blocking any of the mechanics because we're not going to go stream of consciousness and we're going to be forcing the mechanics that we do want with scarabs. So because we're not blocking mechanics, we don't care about that. So we're going to probably grab Wellspring of Creation in order to make the maps less rippy. Uh, but you actually don't need that if you're doing white maps. Uh, you, you don't need any of the map sustain either because you're doing white maps. So what you're probably going to do is you're going to go here, through here, grab this stuff, grab this stuff, go up here, grab this stuff, and go up here, grab this stuff, go around, grab this, go around, grab that. And then you're probably going to, after that, uh, come down here, go up here, grab all this. And then uh, that's pretty much going to be all the nodes that you need for um, basically your essences, your Sean boxes, your metamorph, and your expedition. Now, looking at the profit per map, if you were to put all these mechanics together in white maps, because it doesn't scale with map tiers, right? Uh, in white maps, you're going to be looking at 14 plus around 5 plus around 12 plus around 10, which is like what, 22, 26, 36, around 40, pro 40 C profit per map from just T1 or T2, T3 maps where you're going to basically go in, do the mechanics, leave. Uh, and then if you ever run out of maps, you can just buy them from T-Rack, right? Uh, okay. He's going to sell you some maps uh, as well, so you can do that. You can buy them from other players in bulk. I'm sure people are selling white maps in bulk. But I'm pretty sure that with the with the mechanics that you're interacting with, you're going to have an easy time sustaining your maps anyways, considering it's white maps. Um, obviously, make sure to not use void stones because then no no maps are going to be able to drop. So you're going to remove all your void stones to make sure that you are you know within your low tier maps on your atlas. And that's essentially how you're going to get very, very rich. It's a bit unfortunate because right now it does seem like this is actually a better strategy to make currency than... Um, than farming actual T14 plus maps and struggling through the content. Now you can do this until you get your headhunter or you can reroll into like a more mapping focused build uh, or you go into the like more bossing setup so you'll actually just invest more into the character to where you can actually do like 60% deli T14s which is what I was farming on standard on a 5 link uh, with the medium budget setup which is not even that expensive right so you could easily get this done if you just farm this these this stuff for uh you know a, little, a couple of days or something um and that's kind of basically what i would recommend in order to make easy currency now i am going to stick to the bossing stuff and doing boss carries for um uh, for people for one portal scroll so just in order to help people who are playing builds which are not capable of bossing uh in order to get their void stone so they can go into their actual farming strategy that they intend to be doing uh, so I'm mostly going to be making this this league about the community I'm still going to be earning some currency as I go along the way so I'm not worried about it whatsoever um, but yeah these are definitely my recommendations in terms of the benchmarks you want to reach in order to make the build feel good and what I recommend in terms of 
farming strategy if you actually want to make currency instead of everybody else who's farming you know t14 plus maps and basically making no money interacting with all the league mechanics and making no currency struggling to kill rares and whatnot so that's pretty much my league uh start uh weekend recap hopefully you guys enjoyed to the people who are struggling hopefully this is going to help you out uh with uh, these uh these thresholds and to the people looking to make currency this is what you want to be doing before I go, as always, I do want to say a massive, massive thank you to all my supporters. So the three Alexes, Skady, Bert, Bearded Ape, Brandon, Gustavo, Tim, Som uh, Domo Same, Desu, Miss, Jarl, Leupold, Mercury, Nate, Patrick, Rascol, uh, Rocky, Solomonk, Exo, The Great Master, Thomas Mass, Maestro, Nailid, Ven, Bittizen, uh, Nectarion, Noi, Zethrion, and Luchus. Hopefully you guys, uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.